Hi, welcome back. I watch this YouTuber that starts every one of her videos by saying, it's good to see you. And I think that's really sweet. So like, it's good to see you. It's weird because I just filmed a vlog clip where I was talking at length about how much I really don't want to do sit down videos anymore. But suddenly I find this well lit, nice spot to sit and film. And I'm like, Let's just churn some videos out. As you can see from the title, I'm kind of in a nostalgic mood today. It's gloomy and rainy and my cats are buzzing around me because they want a second dinner. It's like you forgot I just fed you. Okay. I want to talk about the books that got me to where I am today. This video really has no purpose because I'm not like recommending that you read them. I just wanna go down memory lane. This is just a selfish video. I just wanna talk about me. I started reading voraciously when I was like 15, freshman in high school, sophomore in high school. But before that, I'd read a couple books that I've just carried with me for years. But I wanna talk about the books that like launched my passion for reading and like the books that built the foundation on which I now operate. And I feel like it's a little intimate game to be like, here are the books that inspired me to pick up a camera and talk about them because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Gordo, if you touch my camera. Oh. I have a stack of a couple books that I read very early on in my booktube career or previous to my booktube. I just want to shine a spotlight on these iconic novels and tell you why I love them so you can learn more about me, learn where I'm coming from, learn how my reading tastes have evolved and shifted. Gordo. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with a classic. Gordo. <laughs> I will give you attention in like five minutes. I love you. I read this book in sixth grade. And I have vivid memories. I remember in sixth grade, we used to have to keep a journal of all the books we read recently. And I would read this book, read the series, reread this book. It was my everything. Tell me what y'all know about the Phantom Stallion series by Terry Farley, but not just the Phantom Stallion series because there's different Phantom Stallion series. This is none other than the Phantom Stallion series, Wild Horse Island, okay? This is about a girl named Darby. First of all, it's middle grade so it's for the children um, and it's a horse book because I'm me. This is about a girl named Darby who loves horses. She goes to live with her grandfather in Hawaii and he has a horse farm there. She gets a horse there and they like have this bond and it's incredible. I read like books one through seven. I named all my plastic horses after the horses in this series when I used to play with my dolls because I still played with dolls in sixth grade. And I've yet to reread this and I kind of want to do like a full all my horse books reread because I have a whole shelf back here of all the horse books I was obsessed with but this is my OG there were natural disaster plot lines there were like a girl bonding with her horse it's just everything I loved it was just the best if you know you know <laughs> now I'm not gonna try and rank any of these books above one another to be like this is what started it but if we're talking about OG material that got reading on my radar and made me care about the world of literature we have to give credit where it's due Stephanie Meyer let me talk to you I read this after a year or so of thinking I was so cool that I hated Twilight and I actually saw it and I was like oh shit I kind of slapped I read them all and by the time I was like 12 through 14 I would literally keep this book not this particular book this is not my original copy of Breaking Dawn that has the cover torn off because I read it so many times but I would literally keep this book by my bedside and I would read it every night before bed so much so that I would have dreams about it I loved Breaking Dawn I loved Twilight as a whole but this book made me feel things this book like I memorized parts of this book but this was the first time that I like shipped someone and the first time that I was like I want to be loved like Bella and obviously now we know it's not a great example of relationships and like there's a lot to be said about the series and all the different problematic stuff but this is what started me reading things up until 2 a.m. like obsessing over it constantly wanting to reread passages obsessing over the characters imagining myself as the main character like writing all these scenarios in my head and wondering what's gonna happen next like that all happened because of this book so this book taught me how to like be obsessed with fandom and be obsessed with characters and just like love something so much that's not real and that had never happened to me before and it continues to happen to me now because 
because I'm delusional and like to think of fictional characters as my like brain friends. And the only book that knocked Breaking Dawn off its tier of being my, the best book that I had ever read is this bitch right here. The Tell me what you know about The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I'll wait. I remember the reason I bought this book is because I was looking at it before it came out. I was looking at the, well, no, it was like the day it came out. I don't know, like right after it came out, I was looking at its reviews on Amazon. I saw this review, you probably couldn't even find it now, but it was someone that said, I cried so hard reading this book and I'm a man. And for some reason that stuck in my head. I was like, this is gonna be a good book if men are allowed to have feelings for it. <laughs> so I ordered it, read it, and obsessed over it. I loved this book. In fun story, this book is the reason why I found booktube. I remember I was so obsessed with this book, I would look up like theories and music videos and like fan videos of it all back before like the movie was a thing. This was back in what 2012 when this came out? But I remember I was searching YouTube one day, The Fault in Our Stars, just looking for like a fan video or like people fan casting people. I don't know. And I came across none other than Jesse the Reader saying book review of The Fault in Our Stars. I went because he was cute, you know, as Jesse the Reader is. I watched the whole thing and I was like, there's a community of people who do this? There's boys who read? And that's how I found the booktube world. So like, this is my OG story. I just fell in love with a book and I looked for people who made content about that book and then I realized, oh shit, there's a whole side of the internet that does this. So I started watching booktube, made my channel like six months later, we're here. <laughs> I have yet to reread this in its entirety because I know what a wreck I am when I read this. And this is my original copy of the book. You can't even tell, but like the binding is all broken up here. The dust jacket is so wrinkly. Like this is so worn. And once I read this, I got all of John Green's other books. I discovered booktube. So I was getting recommendations from booktube and everything just soared from there. So The Fault in Our Stars means so much to me. And the fact that I was in the same room as John Green during North Texas Teen Book Fest, like, him and Stephanie Meyer, I would love to shake their hands and just say thank you for your creation because without it, I literally would not be where I am today. So next I wanna talk about a book that none of y'all have heard of, maybe a, a select few, but we're about to have a discussion. If you didn't fuck with Wings by April and Pike, I don't know what to say to you. This was the drama of my childhood. I read this when I was like 14 or 15, so before booktube, but my best friend in high school, Abby and I, she told me, wait, you have to read this series. There's four books, this being the first. It's about this girl who sprouts wings, and then she realizes she's a fairy and there's a fairy world. Honestly, Sarah J Mass walked so this book could run. And I, would constantly just talk to my friend about the love triangle and should the main character be with the human or the other fairy? Like who's destined to be with one another? And this book is so much fun. I cannot get rid of these books to save my life. I don't know when, if ever, I'll have the time to reread it, but they are so stupid and fun. I'm like, this book must have been published in like 2009. 2009, literally. So it's got like all the old tropes and the cheesiness and just such juvenile drama, but I gobbled that up. My memories of reading this series were just so fun because I remember my friend liked this one guy, I liked this other guy, and there's just so much drama and going through the series. Like so many scenes in this book stick out to me still, even though I have the worst memory when it comes to reading because hello, look how many of them I've read. This book was always just my jam. It was so fun. I might've even rated these like two stars on Goodreads because I was like, hey, she didn't end up with the guy I wanted her to end up with, but they were so much fun. I'll, I'll give credit where credit is due. April and Pike was out there doing it in 2009. She had to do it to him. Okay, so the next four books that I have are kind of my beginning of booktube. These were my obsessions. I think it laid the groundwork for where we are today. I cannot sit here and talk to you about books that got me where I am without mentioning the holy grail. Miss Queen Shatter Me. This kind of has the same story as The Fault in Our Stars. I found it just browsing through Amazon. I read the preview and I sent it to my friend I keep referencing, Abby, and I was like, this sounds good. This is my original 2012 copy. This book has seen many a tear. <laughs> I brought this book to Saturday school with me when I got in trouble for having too many absences in school. I lent this book to my crush in sophomore year of high school who ended up being gay, so like that was a dead end. I identified 
with this book so heavily because even though it's about a girl who's like living in isolation, she can't touch anyone, she's very like scatterbrained because she's endured abuse her whole life. For me it's like this metaphor about anxiety and like overcoming your fear of people and giving people second chances. Also as a teenager like I'd never been in a relationship, I didn't really understand boys so it was also reassuring and refreshing to read a book about someone who's literally like being touched for the first time. Like that sounds so virginal and weird but I mean like in just like a cuddly sense, not even like an erotic one. <sighs> it was so nice to see someone just like discovering themselves and getting comfortable. Like I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this book without like exposing my 15 year old self as like a loser but I identified with this book so much and I still do and it still brings me so much comfort. As you know I own like 20 copies of the books in this series. We're not gonna talk about the spinoff series because it did this trilogy dirty. If I had to choose one series that's my everything it would be this book and I think you all know that. This book is kind of what I'm known for. Even beyond the storyline this copy means so much to me like Tahara put a quote on the underside. Not gonna lie to y'all I kind of imagine Juliet like this girl on the cover as much as y'all like to roast how bad this cover is. What can I say to this day I'm still kind of obsessed. So the next book that defined an era of booktube for me is Obsidian by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Jennifer L. Armentrout was iconic back in the day. I remember begging. I made a video and I think it's unlisted but she held a contest to see. I don't even know what it was. It was like create something and send it to me and then like you could win an arc. So I literally played my ukulele and like wrote a song about like I want an arc of the next book in the series and I don't think I ever sent it to her. I don't know but I literally wrote a song begging for the last book of this series to be sent to me early. I was obsessed with Damon and Katie. Like do you remember the 2012 era of like the edits about this book and him calling her Kitty and stuff. Everyone was obsessed with this cover model and so like he got kind of famous. I hate that I know his name is his name is Pepe Toth. Like I was obsessed with like the, even the cover person. Oh this book was so much fun and I know I would hate it now if I read it but god damn it was so much fun back in the day and we would all just like hover around this book and this was all our collective happiness. <laughs> this just reminds me of the golden days of books if this was like the top recommendation for paranormal romance. Now I don't even know if I've seen this in a bookstore like it's on the back burner but this was I think all of our origins and this copy is so beat up. When did this book come out? Like 2010? 2012 yeah so right around the beginning of my booktube days. I just remember this is the first series that introduced me to the concept of cliffhangers and it made me distraught reading these books. I think I read them when only the first three were out or first two. These books did me dirty. They have the worst cliffhangers. I couldn't even tell you if they're good. I haven't read them since 2012 but like I just the memories of how badly I wanted the next book in the series after I finished one. Iconic. If you want to see that video of me singing a song to Jennifer L. Armentrout asking for a copy of the last book in this series I could post that on Twitter or something but yeah. Okay I've got one more book to talk about and I feel like I don't even really have that much of a say in this fandom because it's gotten so much bigger than just this book but what do y'all know about City of Bones? I read this book back when City of Lost Souls was just coming out. I had a Morgan Stern ring that I wore. I just loved this series. I was obsessed with Jace Harrodale. I was obsessed with Clary and the drama with Sebastian and Valentine and I'm just gonna say it the movie was so good. I've never seen the series and I don't need to just because I know the movie is better. Those were just the golden days. Like I think I also discovered Sasha because of obviously this series was her everything as well and I think I was looking up stuff like this and I found Sasha doing her cosplay and that might be another way that I kind of found my people on booktube but nothing will replace how much joy this brought me when I was in high school. That about wraps it up. I think those were the most iconic books that got me into reading or that like really made me obsess over something for the first time and connect with a community about reading them and you know building theories and feeling distraught and heartbroken about certain scenes and building that fandom lifestyle. So I know I probably just could have saved myself the air and just done like a tweet about <laughs> like hey look at these really popular books that you probably already read too. You know a walk down memory lane is never bad and now I'm just sitting here like oh man high school. 
reading during class. It's especially crazy now because so many booktubers have started within the past couple years and so their favorite books are stuff that came out in like 2017. So I'm just like, I feel like a veteran. <laughs> I'm like sitting here like, oh my god, this was my shit back in the day. I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into my reading life. Maybe these stories were boring, but I feel like I wanted to talk about them today. That's that on that. Gordo has been so patiently sitting beside me this video. I think he wants some cuddles. Would you like some cuddles? Thank you all so much for watching. I love you. Bye. Say bye.